Now, a last-minute heat wave has warmed up many parts of the UK this week, with some areas seeing highs of 30 degrees. But rising temperatures are causing chaos too. Extreme weather conditions, including floods and wildfires, have swept across the globe this summer. Presenter Riyad Akalaf discovers how future heat waves will change our lives and the way we travel. This summer has seen record temperatures all around the globe. We even had our own mini heat waves here. The Met Office has issued its first ever amber extreme heat warning. It's amber because of the prolonged nature of the heat, both by day and night. Heat waves across Europe, resulting in wildfires in Greece and Turkey, have caused devastation. Whilst last year was Europe's warmest on record, the Met Office have said that by 2050, we could be looking at an extreme hot weather event every other summer in the UK. And that could mean us regularly hitting over 35 degrees. Record-setting figures like that don't just make us feel uncomfortable, but also have a real impact on how we get around. And as a self-confessed plane geek, there's one area in particular that I'm interested in. Air travel. As much as I love to get airborne, the air travel sector is responsible for around 5% of global warming. A return flight for one person from the UK to San Francisco emits 5.5 tonnes of CO2, more than twice the emissions produced by a family car in a year. The irony is that in return, global warming will cause major issues for the aviation industry. I'm meeting with Paul Williams, a professor of atmospheric science from Reading University. So Paul, how does a rising temperature in the UK affect aircraft? As it gets hotter, the air expands and so it becomes less dense, it becomes thinner. And what that means for an aircraft taking off is that the atmospheric mass that's available to lift it up is reduced. Planes rely on a lot of air particles hitting the underneath of the wings in order to give them lift. When the air is hotter and as a result thinner, there's simply fewer of these particles in the same amount of space, so the plane can't produce as much lift, which means they either need to accelerate over a greater distance or way less. You might have a plane that needs two kilometres to take off at 20 degrees, that's going to need two and a half kilometres at 40 degrees. And if those extra 500 metres are not there because the runway isn't long enough, then it will be physically impossible for that plane to take off without reducing its weight. And the obvious way of doing that is to, uh, is to bump passengers off the flight. And we've started to see this happening around the world recently. So with much higher temperatures, it's a choice between lighter planes or more distance for them to take off. Longer runways may solve one problem, but the material they're made of may be just as susceptible to extreme heat. In higher temperatures, our roads may begin to melt. Vehicles on the road account for nearly three quarters of greenhouse gas emissions in the transport sector. But the very thing that continues to drive global warming is coming to a grinding halt because of it. Back in 2018, a road in North Wales became so hot that police had to close it because it was melting. Although air temperature at the time was just over 30 degrees, the surface of the road gets much, much hotter. At the moment, we are looking at a temperature of 31 and a half to 32 degrees. Materials engineer Chris Metcalf specialises in road surfaces. If we get close to the road, we're reading about 10 degrees above the ambient temperature. The bitumen that sticks the road together can get soft when it gets hot. So when the road surface gets typically around 50 degrees, it doesn't melt in the sense of chocolate might, but it does definitely soften in the way that uh, uh, things like treacle would, for instance. And with heavy traffic, that can cause real damage to the road surface. Thankfully, there is a solution. Adding a chemical to the bitumen will make it withstand heat for longer. On the left is a little disc of normal bitumen, which is slowly being heated. There's a ball bearing on top, and when it melts, the ball bearing will fall through the disc. On the right, the same setup, but with the specially modified bitumen. It takes a lot longer 
for a polymer modified bitumen to get soft enough to actually start to move on its own. As you can see, the original road surface gives way sooner than the modified one. It does cost more to cover the roads with this modified material, but it looks like we might have no other choice. If the ambient temperature increases on a regular basis due to climate change, the existing road network will suffer several um, detrimental effects. And there's one final area of travel where we can expect some problems further down the line. Rail delays might be nothing new in the UK, but with rising temperatures, we could potentially be seeing a lot more of them. When temperatures rise, rails buckle. They're designed to withstand the warmest weather of the past, but not the hottest temperatures of the future. Engineer and writer Gareth Dennis specialises in transport systems. One of the challenges on the railways is actually, as temperatures increase, the steel in our rails expands, and so the track can buckle. So in the foreseeable future, what can we do to improve the situation? We can reduce the amount of heat that goes into the rails. Sometimes you'll see that we paint rails white. That's but when to you... reflect the sun. Exactly right, to reflect ah, some of that sunlight. Clever. The other thing we can do is, is data. So better understanding of when hot weather is happening, how it's impacting the rails. So actually like sensors actually on the rails to tell us what the temperatures are. And that helps us send people out to look after the track when we need to, and also understand where we need to maintain or renew tracks, which allows us to, to reduce delays and get more people moving. Global leaders are due to meet at the UN Climate Change Conference this November in Glasgow. Some commentators are calling this our last best hope to tackle the climate crisis. But even if we do take drastic action following that summit, it seems that some changes are already here. And on a day-to-day -day basis, we're now having to cope with the effects of our planet's rising temperature. Yeah, thank you, Riyadh, for that. We're going to have to make lots of changes, aren't yeah. we?